This video is sponsored by Masterworks. One of the most well-known stories across the world is that of Adam and Eve. The apparent first humans to roam the world, made in God's image, and the choices they made that caused them to lose their places in the Garden of Eden. Modern-day scientists and anthropologists have dedicated their lives to finding this small haven. Using what we know from the Bible, folklore, and archaeological discoveries to help them on their mission. So, where is the Garden of Eden? Does it really exist? Biblical times are full of mystery, and until the Gutenberg Press came along, biblical art was the only way to spread the gospel. Art produced in this era has become a status symbol in its own right, which is why I'm excited to introduce our latest sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is an award-winning startup in New York City that allows people like you and I to invest in art as iconic as The Last Supper. If you follow the news, you'll see that traditional forms of investing aren't bulletproof. Pandemics, geopolitical conflict, government regulation. These all might make traditional investments like the stock market tumultuous, but the value of art may not be subjected to these conditions. Think about it. You could value an original Picasso painting anywhere in the world right now, and it could retain its same value despite the economy. This is especially important today as countries around the world are dealing with record high levels of inflation. Well, the last time inflation was this high, this art appreciated an average of 17.5% per year, according to the Masterworks All Art Index. Masterworks gives you the potential to see returns on artworks from names like Picasso, Basquiat, and Banksy. This isn't the metaverse, this isn't NFTs, this is tangible contemporary art. These are established artists with track records of high value works that sell for hundreds of thousands. If that doesn't convince you, Masterworks results speak for themselves. In eight of their nine exits, Masterworks has earned over 13.9% net returns to their investors. Shares of paintings by artists like Banksy, Cause, and Basquiat have sold out within minutes. Currently, there's a queue to sign up with Masterworks, but rabbit hole subscribers can skip the waitlist today with this special link. Find out more in the description down below. Now, back to the video. To catch you up in the biblical, told in the book of Genesis, God first created Adam, the first man, and then Eve, the first woman. God placed the pair in the Garden of Eden to take care of and cultivate the land. He instructed Adam and Eve to eat from any fruit on the trees other than the tree of good and evil, telling them that if they did, they would die and the innocence of mankind would be lost forever. For a time, the pair lived in harmony, but one day, the devil, disguised as a snake, entered the garden in search of Eve. The serpent claimed that if Eve ate from the fruit of the tree, she would become enlightened and have the same knowledge as God. Eve gave in to the temptation and ate from the tree, as did Adam. As soon as they finished eating, they knew they were in trouble. When God eventually found out what they had done, he banished them from the garden. They were sent to live in the outside world with the knowledge of both good and evil, which had been given to them by the forbidden fruit. Though they had not died like they were initially told, they lost all connection to God and suffered throughout the rest of their lives, bringing children into the world, falling sick, aging, and eventually dying. And if you're one to believe the Bible, you'll believe that the lineage from Adam and Eve works its way down to you, where you're sitting right now, watching this from the comfort of your own home wondering if there's any evidence of all this happening. Throughout the years, the Garden of Eden has been found in various places across the road numerous times. Each discovery is naturally located in a distinct area. In Genesis 2, the Bible recounts the region surrounding the garden, even using familiar geographical names like Ethiopia, a spring in the garden that splits into four significant rivers, including the Euphrates, is mentioned. This has led many, including Bible experts, to infer that the Garden of Eden was formerly located somewhere in the modern-day Tigris-Euphrates River Valley in the Middle East, with its remnants having long since vanished. Let's look at what we already know from the Bible first. Although the Euphrates and the Tigris originate in the vicinity of Mount Ararat, 
They do not flow from a single source like the spokes of a wheel, filling the country as previously stated. The other two rivers are also absent, and none of them flow into Ethiopia. The mineral deposits listed are also unrelated to those in this region. In short, the descriptions in geography are inconsistent. If what the Bible says about the Great Flood is true, then it would have completely reshaped the globe's surface, as it's depicted in Genesis 6 through 9. The land surface in one location would have been eroded, and the sediments would have been redeposited elsewhere, as big floods do. According to biblical accounts, the flood blanketed the earth with processes that ran at rates, scales, and intensities well beyond what is currently conceivable. The entire planet couldn't have survived undisturbed. Organic waste would have been abundant in these sediments, which over time would have either fossilized or transformed into oil and gas. The sediments would eventually harden into sedimentary rock, breaking along fault lines or bending into mountains in some locations. Today, large amounts of oil and gas are pumped from strata almost two miles thick in the Tigris-Euphrates River Valley. The sediments, which are now rock, are ruthlessly shattered by large fault systems and drastically distorted into and beneath current mountains. They completely engulf and mask any potential pre-flood areas. Furthermore, the basement rock would have probably experienced erosion as well if it had been existing before the flood. No part of the current terrain or subsurface could conceivably resemble the world before the flood. That world has vanished. Due to references to Kush, which is now Ethiopia, or the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, there has been fresh discussion that the garden may be situated between the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East and Ethiopia. Despite this, nobody is convinced of the Garden of Eden's precise location. Numerous other floods, including the Great Flood, have changed the composition of the globe over time. But recent speculation suggests that the Garden of Eden is actually located in one of this channel's favorite continents. Antarctica. In 1962, an Australian six-man Vostok Traverse expedition began. The expedition was undertaken from Wilkes Station to the abandoned Russian Vostok 1 research station, 3,000 kilometers south, close to the South Pole. Those involved in the expedition claimed that they had found real evidence of ancient civilizations during their travels. In their longbook, one of the team had written, Once David had been safely brought out of the crevice and made comfortable, the rest of the team lowered me down to investigate the curious metallic-like objects he claimed to have seen further down in a niche carved out of the chasm wall. I gradually negotiated my way down the rocky wall until at last I reached the niche which must have been 40 meters below the gash in the ice on the surface. Closer examination revealed that the objects were in fact large urn-like vessels standing about 1.8 meters high and almost one meter across at their widest point, tapering slightly at each end. Nearly all of them appeared to be sealed by heavy lids. I can now also see that the polished surfaces, which did indeed appear to be made of some metallic substance, were decorated with geometric forms and also what appeared to be ideographic inscriptions. I instinctively felt that this was the proof we had been looking for. Although we never expected to find artifacts that appeared to be in such perfect state of preservation, the findings from this expedition were allegedly published by the Sydney Morning Herald in March of the same year. I say allegedly, because there's one image available online of said article. Carving dating was said to be taking place in order to establish where the ancient documents came from, but no further information, except for the headline, was ever made available. Was something covered up? In the book, Paradise Found, The Cradle of the Human Race at the North Pole, by author William Fairfield Warren, found evidence that the origin of the human race came from none other than the North Pole. First published in 1885, Warren positioned Atlantis, the Garden of Eden, Mount Meru, Avalon, and Hyperborea at the North Pole in this book. Warren thought that all these semi-mythical places were true, and all were once inhabited in the far north, where man was first created. But what if Eden was never on Earth as we know it, to begin with? Scholar Piet von Dyck put forward an argument that when ancient cultures referred to the East, they didn't mean the physical East like how we would consider it on a compass. Instead, when talking about East, 
Ancient civilizations would be referring to the cosmic in-between realm, not visible by the human eye, and nowhere you could find on a map. Von Dyke proposed that the Garden of Eden existed, but on the astral plane, saying, It is concluded that it is futile to assume a locality for Eden within the boundaries of our natural human world, because it was perceived as being located outside our known world, in the mythical, in-between space of the eastern horizon. So, what do you think? Could the shifting world have caused the garden to have ended up in Antarctica? Do you believe the narrative that has resided somewhere in the ancient Mesopotamia? Or does it exist beyond human consciousness? <laughs>